we're going to pick up the bar bill for their opening reception because we screwed up. Right? Ownership. Now, as time goes on, everybody will breathe and everybody will feel good and go, wow, he did the right thing. I won't tell you how much that's costing me, right? Not cheap, let me tell you. But it's the right thing because that's how I would expect to be treated, right? Because it's clear that we made the mistake. I could duck, whoop, not my problem. But that wouldn't be right. We succeed when every decision is based on a clear understanding and belief in what we do. So what we do is we run medium-sized hotels of exceptional quality and attract great people to work for us. It's job number one. We couple this conviction with sound financial planning. We expect to achieve a fair and reasonable profit to ensure the prosperity of the company. Interesting words there, fair and reasonable. We're not out to make a gazillion dollars. We're not out to be the most profitable company in the galaxy. It just needs to be fair and reasonable. So if you make about a 30% GOP, you're doing okay, right? as a hotel, do you really need to make a 50% GOP? Wouldn't that, well, that would be great, right? It's, I'm the owner sitting there, yeah, I'll make 50% GOP, I want the money. Very often when that happens, things are out of balance, though. You're either charging too much for the marketplace, which is a bubble situation, which means something bad's gonna happen to you, or you're not really delivering what you should do. You're, you're cutting back on service. And last year, I think, is a great example of oh, it's tough times, recession, oh, top lines falling, cut, 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 cut. Take the flowers out, take the turn down amenities out, don't wash the sheets because we'll call it sustainability. Um, <laughs> what else can we do? What else could we Housekeeping service. Okay, if you don't need housekeeping service, we'll give you a $5 credit. What? That's not hospitality. Terrible. Won't mention any names. Companies that did that, who aren't our competition. Also a great Canadian company that begins with F. But I'm not gonna mention their name. That isn't quality hospitality, because the guest comes in and goes, hold on, I thought I booked in a Four Seasons. You can't have those knee-jerk reactions to the market fluctuations. The hospitality business, the tourism business, is a long-term business. It's not about how much money you made today, or even this week, or this month, or this quarter, or even this year, quite frankly. Okay, because there will always be fluctuations in the market. Always has, always will. There will be ups and downs. So the fair and reasonable profit is critical. It's a long-term business. There you go, long-term benefits to our hotel owners, long-term benefits to our hotel owners, our shareholders, our customers, and our employees. Okay, the employees also in it for the long haul. They want job security, they wanna know they're gonna have hours, work is gonna be good, and they're gonna be able to pay their bills at the end of, end of the week. We okay for time? Okay. Can you see who that is? This is a guy called Tom Peters. You may or may not know. Chances are you love him or hate him, and this is where technology is gonna fail me, isn't it? Let's try if I point it right at his head. It's not gonna work. Darn. Where's my tech genius? There he is. Frank. <laughs> I should be able to touch him and he starts talking, <laughs> if you know what I mean. It was an embedded file that was working fine this morning, so. So it's not set, so if he won't talk. Okay, all right, no worries, not, not important. Not important. Darn it, that was gonna be so good. 
It's going to be better than all the rest of my stuff put together. Okay, so some Q&A then, if we've got uh, 10 minutes. Who wants to go first? I did notice. Yeah, um, I, I'd like to say that we, we didn't do any of that, but obviously we have to, right? I mean, last year was a very unique time. Um, the critical thing is you do it much as a duck, right? The duck is going like this under the water, right? But shh, the customer sees the duck just gliding elegantly along. Okay, that's the idea. Now, probably last year, I think every company tried some things. Okay, let's try it. Ooh, that didn't feel good. Okay. The good thing is with any decision, you can always change back, right? But you've got to be in tune with your customer. Okay, so yeah, there were some things we tried that flat out didn't work, right? From a, from a top line perspective. Um, and there were some savings thing that I, I, off the top of my head, I mean, we, we, we took the employees out of the health club because why do we need an employee there to watch you work out, not you personally? <laughs> What is that person really doing? They're folding towels, they're wiping sweat off machines. I can have somebody go through there and do that periodically because when we really sat and watched it, that person was spending a lot of time watching television. Now the club members, oh, you've taken the people away. And, oh, yeah. You were doing a side deal with that guy doing personal training. And, sorry, yes, that's gone away. So we had to, we had to go across some of those bridges. But, um, yeah, I, I think maintaining that level. The customer will always go out there and find a, a different deal and try different things, new things or cheaper things. That's the marketplace, right? Um, but if we do our job right, they'll come back. I, I think that's the, that's the whole point there, right? Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting, your opening comments, you talked about the difference between asset management and the fact that you are now a management company with an ownership, with a series of owners of the hotels. Now, the question I have is, What's the effect on the owners? You don't have to deal with equity values anymore. The value of the equity value of the property anymore. Right. So you have to look at the profit ability in terms of the cash flow and how much money you're making, right? What's the impact of the quality of your hotel on the asset value versus the property value? I'm really interested in this, and particularly in the case of Vancouver and some of the very fast growing cities. Um, at what point does the owner decide they're going to sell out and cash in and grab the value? <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's, their cash, that's their cash question, right? Um, and I, we, we're a little bit of a different uh, example uh, for Seasons Vancouver, but I'll, I'll use Maui as a, as a better example, maybe. Um, resort was opened by uh, Mr. Sekiguchi, phenomenally wealthy Japanese guy. We, we were opened as his toy, basically. Um, we then got sold to a Japanese construction company, and they really tried to wring the money out of there. Capital was tight, cash was tight. They were making lots of cash, quite frankly. But they were doing it at the expense of the building. And things to where we should have been putting money into the infrastructure, they weren't doing it. Um, they ultimately sold to Michael Dell, made a huge amount of money, um, walked away really happy. But the money, the property needed 50 million spent on it. Right? Which, which I was part of doing, and it was, it was fun to do, right? It wasn't just infrastructure things, there were fun things to do. Um, and the value of the asset, I mean, I'm not gonna throw numbers at you, but Michael Bell made out like a bandit. Okay, yeah, he invested 50, but the operating cycle, right, which is really to, to your point, right, was the nose of the plane was going like that, uh, between 04 when he bought and 08 when I left. Wow did well, right, from, a, from a, a top line perspective. And the property obviously is constantly revaluing and refinancing. And, whew, he did very well. 